Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, thank you for clicking on this video. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back and thank you for your continued support. I have a great, great news for you guys. I am finally a YouTube partner and I wouldn't be able to do it without your support and your presence in my channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I'm not very consistent in uploading videos. I have a full-time work. I'm not making excuses. And also sometimes it's just hard to make videos because of everything that's going on in life. But whenever I see your support and engagement in my channel, it keeps me motivated to continuously think of helpful contents and make videos. All right, enough of that. For this week's video, I will be talking about Ontario Health Insurance Plan or OHIP. If you're following my channel, you know that I recently got my PGWP or post-graduation work permit. And one of the things that you have to do once you receive your PGWP is to apply for OHIP as well as to extend your SIN. Because if you came to Canada as a student, the SIN that they have awarded to you would only have an expiry similar to your study permit. So most likely, that has already expired by the time you get your PGWP. However, in this video, I will focus about OHIP. I'll make another video on how you can extend your SIN. As I have previously mentioned in my earlier videos, Having an insurance in Canada is really important because medical assistance here is outrageous. If you have to go to the hospital and you don't have any insurance, you will definitely break your bank. Luckily, Canada is well known for having its very good health system, not just in Ontario, but across the country. One important thing that you have to note if you're applying OHIP for the first time is that this application can only be done in person. First application cannot be done online and you really must go to Service Ontario to file your application. Please take note that Service Ontario and Service Canada are two different government offices and for your OHIP application, you must go to Service Ontario. The other important thing that I want you to know is that not all Service Ontario offices are able to process OHIP application for temporary residents. I didn't know this before going to Service Ontario, so I was on my merry way and I was very excited to apply for OHIP because after months and months of waiting for my PGWP, I finally got it and I'm finally able to apply for OHIP. And there I was, I thought everything will go smoothly, but to my disappointment, they told me that they are unable to process my application and that I have to go to a different service Ontario to process it. If I would have known, I wouldn't wasted my afternoon to go to their office. Later in this video, I'll walk you through on how you can find out if the Service Ontario near you can service OHIP application for temporary residents. Now let's talk about requirements. You need three documents in order for you to apply for OHIP. The first requirement is a proof of Canadian citizenship or OHIP eligibility immigration status. The second one is proof of Ontario residency. And finally, the third one is proof of identity. For the first requirement, which is proof of Canadian citizenship or OHIP eligibility immigration status, these are the documents that you can use. If you are on a PGWP, just like me, you will most likely fall under other immigrants and you have to present your work permit, which is your PGWP. Note that there is an extra requirement if you are using your work permit to apply for OHIP, and that is an employment letter issued by your employer. 
and they have very strict guidelines on what should be indicated in the letter. The letter needs to be in the official company letterhead. It must state that you are working full-time and it also must state the name or the title of your position. The company address must be located in Ontario. It must state your start date and that the employer intends to employ you for at least six months or that they are hiring you permanently. There should also be a contact information of your employer and of course it needs to be signed. Here is a sample of an employment letter. This is the actual employment letter that I submitted in my OHIP application and I've highlighted all the key words that is required per the employment letter guidelines from Service Ontario. For the second requirement, which is proof of residency in Ontario, these are the documents that you can present. I've highlighted the documents that I think will be available to most new applicants in Canada. You only need to present one of these documents and for my case, I presented my pay stub which shows my address in Ontario. And the third and final requirement is proof of identity. These are the documents that you can present to prove your identity. And again, you only have to choose one of these documents. Personally, I presented my Philippine passport in my OHIP application. Please note that all the documents that you will bring on the day of your application must be in original. You cannot bring any photocopies of your documents, including the employment letter. Now that you have gathered all the required documents for your OHIP application, we'll move on to the application form and booking your appointment. I'll put both links in the description box on where you can download the form to apply for OHIP and also where you can book your appointment. All right, so here is a sample OHIP application form. Um, it's three pages. The first page is just instruction. The second page is the actual form in English. And the third page is the form in French. So you really just have to fill out one. If your first language is English, then use English. And if French, then use page three. For printing, you only need to print the form that you filled out. So if you only filled out page two, which is the English form, then that's all you need. You can skip page one and three. So I made up some information and filled out this form. Um, section A is about personal information. So your last name, first name, middle name, and your sex. You also have to fill out your date of birth, official language. Have you ever had an Ontario Health Card number? So it's my first time applying. So I, I tick on no uh, it will ask for your home telephone number and your work or other telephone number if you don't have to you can just leave blank your mailing address uh, make sure that you provide your complete mailing address because on the day that you submit your application they will only give you like a printed receipt um, that says your insurance has already started so if in case you need to use it you can present that paper, but the actual OHIP card will be delivered to your mail after four weeks. Section B is to be completed only by new or returning residents. So before living here in Brantford, I was living in Kitchener, but when I was filling this out and I was entering my Kitchener information, it doesn't felt right because of the questions that when did you leave the above address and when did you arrive to Ontario. So I presume that it's asking for my address before moving to Ontario. So I was in the Philippines then. I've entered my Philippine address. The date that you leave the above address and the date that you arrive Ontario. How long do you plan to live in Ontario? Temporarily. If you move from another part of Canada, were you covered by a government health plan? No. Are you a Canadian citizen returning to Canada? No. Are you an immigrant returning to Canada? No. Are you a new immigrant? No. So notice that when I tick this part 
uh, of this form. It removes the previous selection that I have made. Nothing to be worried about. I think that's just how the form was set up. So just move on to the next question. Have you recently left the Canadian Forces? No. Have you recently been released from a federal penitentiary? No. Are you the spouse or dependent of a regular force member of the Canadian Forces? No. Are you a reservist returning from an out-of-country posting? No. Are you the spouse or dependent of a reservist currently deployed by the Canadian Forces into active, into active service? No. The third and final part is agreement. So just stick on the signature. Um, if you are the applicant, of course, click on applicant and the date today. And that's it. So you'll just have to print the form and sign this form on this part. Now let's talk about appointment booking. I highly recommend that you book your appointment online. Firstly, because this is where you'll find out if the Service Ontario near your area is able to process an OHIP application for temporary residents. And secondly, it will make your application faster. I literally spent 10 minutes to process everything from the time that I entered their door to the time that I line up with the reception up until the time that I've provided my signature and they have taken my picture. Literally 10 minutes. That's how fast and efficient they are if you have all the documents ready and if you book an appointment. All right, so again, the link is in the description box. Um, this is how you can check if uh, the Service Ontario are able to process OHIP application for permanent residency. So this has all the Service Ontario offices in Ontario and I am in Brantford and we only have one Service Ontario. So if you click um, that office, you will see a special note in this facility. So it says you cannot get health card services at this location if you have a temporary resident permit or work permit that says valid until or issued until a specific date. So this means this Service Ontario office is unable to process a OHIP application for temporary residents. So I had to go to Hamilton in 119 King Street. So if you will notice, there is no special note on this Service Ontario office. So it means that they are able to process um, applications even for those on temporary residency in Canada. So to book an appointment, just click on book appointment and it will lead you to another page. Just select the service that you want to get from them. That would be under health card, service Ontario location. So select again the location that you wish to book an appointment with. You can also confirm on this page if the Service Ontario office that you are booking an appointment with um, can process application for temporary residence. So if you can see, I will select another office in Hamilton. It will state that this location does not offer health card services relating to work permits, special registrations, or extended absences. So the other one, which is in Hamilton, King, and McNabb, doesn't have that special note. So that confirms that this office does process um, health card services for temporary residents. So just fill out all the fields, uh, first and last name, your phone number, uh, and your email address, and then select the date of your appointment. You can book an appointment as soon as the next day and select the time that is most convenient to you. And when you're ready, just click on book appointment. And that is it. Service Ontario will send a confirmation in your email address, including the information of your appointment with them. All right, so that is your complete guide on how you can apply for Ontario Health Insurance Plan. I hope that you won't need to use your insurance, but just like what they say, 
it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I'm going to finish this video with that thought. If you're still watching, thank you so much for watching until the end. If you learned something from this video or if I help you in any way with your OHIP application, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and don't forget to share this to your friends. That's it for me today, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!